This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, another blow for the city's cycleways as the AA withdraws from a liaison group out of frustration. A Swedish sustainability educator shares his ideas in the hope it will empower tertiary students. And we'll find out why a local man has decided to cycle from one end of the country to the other. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. The Automobile Association has pulled out of a local advisory forum citing ongoing frustrations. It was part of the City Council's Cycleway Network Liaison Group, set up to aid consultation about roading development. But AA staff say a lack of engagement has prompted them to pull the plug. Cutting ties with cycleway development. The AA is no longer a part of the Cycleway Network Liaison Group designed to represent all facets of transport and safety within the city. The group was formed last May to engage with affected parties about the City Council's strategic Cycleway Network plans. AA Otago Chairman Jeff Donaldson says recommendations by group members have been ignored and instead they have been told what's happening. The AA had safety concerns about a section of Portobello Road, but it's taken 18 months for a planned solution. The Dunedin City Council recently announced a design plan for the Portobello Road redevelopment. It's expected to cost half a million dollars and be completed this winter. This is one of several plans that sparked frustration within the AA for lacking good safety decisions. The AA is also criticising plans to make State Highway 1 safer for cyclists. Members aren't ruling out rejoining the group if adjustments are made to the consultation process and safety concerns are taken on board. Other organisations involved include Cycling Advocacy Group, Spokes, the Otago Chamber of Commerce and the National Transport Association. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Police are calling for the victim of a late night harassment to come forward following the arrest of four young men. The accused, aged between 16 and 22, were arrested just before midnight. They allegedly assaulted a 20-year-old man near the Oval, robbing him of his cell phone. He'd finished work and was walking towards town when the men approached him, asking for cigarettes. He tried to leave, but the accused allegedly chased him and assaulted him before stealing his phone. Police say the group also threatened and chased another man and they're waiting for him to come forward. The four accused have appeared in court on charges relating to the phone robbery. A European specialist in sustainability is in the city promoting greater social engagement by universities. The Swedish educator is involved in a local conference involving tertiary staff from around the world and he's hoping to influence student action. Kickstarting a discussion. This international specialist is in Dunedin speaking about how universities can play a part in responding to social issues. Today I had a seminar where I, I spoke a little bit about an initiative uh, that I've been a part of in, in Sweden. I'm the director of a centre that uh, works with um, students, researchers, teachers and practitioners uh, from the community in creating spaces for learning around uh, sustainability challenges. Dr Stoddard is a representative of the Centre for Environment and Development Studies in Sweden. The centre is aimed at tackling the most crucial issues and giving students the resources and platforms to address them. He's travelled south to pass on methods of student engagement and sustainability practice to the University of Otago. The question is basically how can we empower learners uh, within universities to become active agents of change uh, in dealing with some of the big social and environmental issues of our times uh, and how can we work together across uh, universities uh, to, to help each other achieve those goals. He's from Uppsala University where staff have been connecting with Otago students and researchers for several years. Although Sweden and New Zealand have different social climates, they share some issues. Conversations have been about identifying the challenges of climate change, resource depletion and economic crisis. It's all in the aim of creating solutions.
I think hopefully what I could help is to initiate conversations between academics, researchers, and students, but also uh, people in the surrounding community uh, of how you can work more collaboratively uh, to, to address these issues that, that we face. Dr Stoddard's four-day visit ends tomorrow when he'll be leaving the city. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Plans to install floodlights at the University Oval are being put on hold. The Otago Cricket Association is shelving the idea due to rising costs. It was promised a million dollars by the Dunedin City Council for the project, but the association can't afford its share, can't afford its share of expenses, which are skyrocketing. Floodlights would allow international day-night tests to be played in Dunedin. For that to happen, the Oval Embankment needs to be expanded to accommodate a larger crowd. Now the association is focusing on that upgrade before considering the installation of lights. A local man is cycling the length of the country, raising awareness about road safety and etiquette. He and another cyclist departed Dunedin this afternoon, expecting to reach Cape Reinga in a month. And it's not the first time they've traversed the entire country. Pedaling towards peace. These cyclists are on a 40-day journey from Bluff to Cape Reinga. They've been catching up with friends at the Dunedin Peace Pole before heading north. The primary aim is that we want to move road attitudes from one of rugby, which is really defensive and, and aggressive, to a more sharing, caring road attitude. And that responsibility falls largely with cyclists as much as anything else. Gawley's a Dunedin man who cycled the length of Japan in 2014 to acknowledge 70 years of peace between that nation and New Zealand. His companion, Hide Koike, also made the journey. And now the Japanese man's traversing Aotearoa for a similarly peaceful cause. Occasionally we, say, we see cyclists with some pretty arrogant behaviour riding two, three abreast, which annoys everybody. And in fact, most of the drivers that we've encountered by far, 99.99% of the drivers so far, truckies, everybody included, have made a point of giving us space, actually slowing down, giving us an opportunity to get across bridges. The riders have been collecting messages of support along the way while spreading their message. Their journeys coinciding with National Bikewise Month and is tied in to Gawley's work with the Dunedin Multi-Ethnic Council. They're hoping it'll inspire the powers that be to activate a safer transport culture. We also want to do a research so that we can ultimately give this information as part of a bigger document to the Governor-General for government to look at on the conditions of our roads, <clears throat> New Zealand has promoted itself as a cycling destination. Cycling is good for us as New Zealanders anyway. Over the next few weeks, Gawley and Kuike will be clocking up around 2,300 kilometres. Their trip's self-funded, but they're hoping to fundraise to publish a multilingual guide to safe cycling in New Zealand. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we meet the local minister who's heading to New York for a United Nations event and a celebration time for a local surf club 50 years on. We at Alex Campbell's have got far too many shirts. We've got buy one, get one free at the moment on all shirts. Business shirts, short sleeve shirts, you name it. Buy one, get one free. 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 Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. For professional, reliable and approachable service where your dream kitchen design can become an affordable reality, contact the team at Kitchens for Less. Call 455-9973 or visit us online. We've got all, it's all about our customer care, great food, great coffee and supported by some awesome staff. We think it's really important that the customers when they come in here have a good experience and leave wanting to come back. And I think in a nutshell, that's what the good oil is all about.
Chiropractic Care is a drug-free way of sorting out stress and pain by getting your spine in line with body and brain. At Mosgiel Chiropractic and Wellbeing, we provide family chiropractic care. Feel taller, lighter and brighter. Call Mosgiel Chiropractic and Wellbeing today, 484-7272. Don't miss the home show. Lots of great ideas, great prizes, great deals. Kitchens, bathrooms, furnishings and lots more. The Edgar Centre Moor FM Arena, 4th, 5th, 6th of March. Adults, $10, children free. See you at the home show. The team at Caltex North care more about you than just putting fuel in your tank. They care about you and your family. At the Caltex Valley Workshop, the skilled service team care about your safety, extending the life of your car and helping you live more economically. There's a range of modern equipment to give comprehensive warrant of fitness checks and servicing to your vehicle. Come visit your only local in North East Valley and receive 10% off when you book your warrant and service together. That's your friendly Caltex Valley Workshop, 134 North Road or book online at caltexvalley.co.nz. Mobility scooters are targets. Mobility scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Are you looking to add a new dimension to your home? A Christie's glass house and shed will add value to your property and increase your gardening pleasure and can be easily ventilated during the day. A Christie's Garden Shed is a brilliant addition to your backyard, adding to your storage capacity. The great Kiwi Glass House and Shed come in all shapes and sizes, are manufactured in Dunedin, and come in a range of nature-inspired colour steel colours or metallic zinc aluminum finish. Choose the Kiwi Shed that has stood the test of time. Choose Christie. Hello, I'm Dougal Stevenson. Welcome to Museum Diaries, the programme where we delve deeper into the museum vaults. So this week, Greek ceramics, the Otago Shag. Yes, we do have one. Early hominid stone tools and what they meant to early civilization and what they mean to us. And you'll love this, Thomas Jeffrey Parker's glycerin stomachs. Welcome back. Investors in a Milton wool mill are unlikely to be reimbursed through the company's liquidation. Receivers say Bruce Woolen Mill Limited owes just over $4.7 million. About a million is owing to secured and preferential creditors, including employees and inland revenue. But the majority of the debt relates to shareholder loans and unsecured investments. The company's assets are being sold, but they're not expected to generate enough money to cover liabilities. A liquidation hearing is scheduled for the High Court at Dunedin on the 3rd of March. And on that note, let's take a look at today's financials. The NZX50 has closed the day up 16 points. It's now at 6,154. The FTSE is up 62 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is down against all the currencies that we follow. A local church minister is preparing for the trip of a lifetime after being chosen to attend a United Nations event in New York. Reverend Alofalali is attending the 60th Commission on the Status of Women and she's here to tell us all about it. Good evening. Hi. What is the focus of this event? Well, it's the empowerment of women across the world and it's such an exciting event that's going to have about well, last year 9,000 women and girls attended the event and this year already 6,000 women have indicated that they are going to be there. Mm. So it's really exciting. How did you come to be involved? Well, an email was sent out uh, asking people if they were interested in applying to go as part of the delegation and I thought New York, yes, yeah. sounds good and all these women who will be there at the UN headquarters discussing how to empower women in their own countries and unlike a conference it's actually a commission where you can actually have input into the discussion so you're not sitting and listening to people talking you're actually being able to give your input and your ideas and so it's going to be a great event. Mm. Mm. Have you attended this one before? No, no, no. Oh, how exciting. Uh, are any other locals going? Apparently it's a southern woman delegation. Oh. The, there were some women from the North Island who were interested but didn't take it further than mm. indicating interest. So it'll be a southern woman delegation. And strong too. <laughs> what are you hoping to get from the experience? I think just being there and thinking that you're one of 6,000 women who are there to talk about how to empower and how to increase you know, women's status in the world is going to be mind-blowing mm. and women from around the world, so it's going to be great. Will it be useful in your work here? 
Definitely, I think any experience that you can go away and find out about others and then come back and share with your own community and your family is, is going to be great. Mm. I'm looking forward to it. Have you been to New York before? No. So how long are you going to be spending there? Twelve days. And you're fundraising for the trip? Yes, we have a concert on Thursday night next week at the Salvation Army Hall where TJ Tautua, one of my friends, is coming down to headline the concert. He was the best male Pacific artist in the New Zealand Music Awards last year as well as Best Gospel. So it's great that he can do that. And my children's bands, Albion Place and The Last Minute will be performing in Island Food sure to be a hit. You are well connected. <laughs> <laughs> now you're about to start a new job as well. Can you yes, tell us about that? Yes, starting next on the 14th of February will be my first Sunday at Dunedin South Presbyterian Church and it's exciting to be starting there. Wonderful. Now what do you hope to offer the UN event? Well I think we we each have a story to tell mm. and being able to tell my story and then to be able to hear other stories is going to be something that I will treasure probably for my whole lifetime because it's mm. going to be a life-changing event and it's a trip of a lifetime. Absolutely. Well, good luck with the fundraising. Thank you. Reverend Alofalali, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, local board riders celebrate a milestone and we'll find out how keen you are to have more Aucklanders living here. Do you want support for your breathing? You are not alone. In New Zealand, over 600,000 people have some form of breathing difficulty, especially with the high pollen season in New Zealand. Puff Plus is an excellent natural product developed to support lung function and breathing difficulties. Puff Plus is so effective, you get a no questions asked, money back guarantee on the first purchase. Give it a go, you have nothing to lose. Call now, 0800 502 402. Take as directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. I understand now how economics can affect global warming. And I found out how grass growth in New Zealand affects Fashion Week in Milan. I can even tell you how smartphone technology affects the survival of mountain gorillas. Sorry. Because at the Otago Business School, it's not just about the world of business, it's how business affects the world. I'm Kim. <laughs> Michaela. David. And this is our place in the world. Take your place in the world. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473-8252. Please adopt a pet now. They will love you forever. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz Yes, Sunny Chin. Neck, shoulder, back, sciatica, pain specialists, innovative tools specifically designed to contour your grooves of depletion and excess muscle buildup. Sunny Chin. It works. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires. So easy, so efficient. Mosgiel Mowers Plus can help you with products to make your garden maintenance jobs easier. Lawn mowers, ride-ons, chainsaws, line trimmers. Sales and service are our specialty. Mosgiel Mowers Plus. Phone 489-3572, 22B Gordon Road, Mosgiel. We at Alex Campbell's have got far too many shirts. We've got buy one, get one free at the moment on all shirts. Business shirts, short sleeve shirts, you name it. Buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. Buy one. 
get one free. Buy one, get one free. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Welcome back. Another commercial car yard is the subject of burglary and theft being investigated by police. Officers are appealing for information about the robbery of a South Dunedin premises early this morning. They say four men were seen removing tyres from vehicles inside the property on Andersons Bay Road at about 1.30am. The thieves were then seen leaving the yard shortly afterwards in a white four-wheel drive similar to a Toyota Hilux. Several commercial sites have been targeted by criminals recently. Burglars are commonly stealing from vehicles inside locked yards. A local surfing club formed in the 1960s is celebrating a major milestone. The South Coast Board Riders Association is turning 50 this weekend. Former presidents and members are marking the occasion, gathering to share stories and reminisce about the organisation's past. Surf's up. After more than a year of planning, the South Coast Board Riders Association is getting set to celebrate half a century in Dunedin. The 50th Jubilee event is bringing members past and present back to the beach. Everyone's pulled together. There's, we've got people from all around the country and Australia coming over, especially for the weekend. And the local um, community and businesses have been fantastic. It's been great. Over a thousand photos have been collected by Jubilee organisers, helping illustrate the club's long history. For Clark, the milestones also provided a good excuse to look back at the origins of the association. It's been really interesting. Uh, the finding out the founding members of the club, um, there's Tony Begg, Rob Franklin, Julian Allpress, uh, Brian Muntz and Cog Leslie. They're actually the guys who are sitting around back in the mid-60s and said, uh, let's start a surf club. So they're the key guys who have started it all off and kicked it all off. Back in the 60s, surfing was a social pastime, but over the years it's become more competitive. Clark says as the sport has progressed, so too has the Board Riders Association. They had a competition back in those days, more of a social event, but now we've gone right through to, we've just held the nationals uh, just in the last few weeks here. And so it's very competitive and as you know, surfing's gone professional and so the whole um, surfing has changed dramatically in that time frame. Part of a planned Jubilee surf competition will take place at Warrington Beach where the club first started. The current St Clair club rooms will serve as the headquarters for the four day celebrations. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Enterprise Dunedin is actively marketing the city to Aucklanders, trying to entice small people and businesses south. But there is concern about a resulting rise in local house prices and a strain on facilities. This week's 39 Dunedin News online poll asked if you'd like to see more Aucklanders down here. Not quite the landslide I was expecting. 39% don't mind, 61% would rather not. The New Zealand Transport Agency is planning to separate cyclists from traffic on the city's one-way system. It'll cost about $8 million to create raised cycle paths along the two inner-city stretches of State Highway 1. Next week's 39 Dunedin News online poll asks if you'd cycle the one-way system if you're separated from the traffic. You can vote at our website dunedintv.co.nz. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. The Automobile Association has quit its involvement in a local cycleway development group, citing frustrations and safety concerns. A sustainability expert from Sweden has been telling University of Otago staff how to better engage in social issues. And a local man is cycling the length of the country to raise awareness about road conditions, safety and travel etiquette. And it's time now to find out what's going to be in Saturday's Otago Daily Times. And Craig Page joins us. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, we've got a bumper edition of the uh, ODT this weekend. Uh, we're having a look up the front with uh, secondary schools in Dunedin. Uh, there's been some significant role increases in year nines against 
uh, for some of the schools that you wouldn't necessarily expect so. So it's good positive stuff for them, as, particularly as there's been meetings with talks of, of possibly closing secondary schools around Dunedin, so it's good positive stuff. Yeah. We've also had a look at apartment living in Dunedin, it's becoming a bit of a growing trend. Talk to some people who have uh, made the move, left the lawns behind and moved to Central City. And we're also having a look at, at where next for apartment living in Dunedin, particularly uh, down in the warehouse pr yeah. precinct. Um, and in our weekend bumper weekend mix, we're um, an interesting piece on the Waitangi, uh, I guess Waitangi celebrations this weekend. We look at the treaty and, and what it means and whether it's still relevant for New Zealand. There's also an interesting fashion piece with uh, tennis star Serena Williams, which is worth a read. Oh, that's all in tomorrow's ODT plus a whole lot more. Thanks, Certainly Craig. Yes, thank you. Time now for local weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Puff Plus. And here is today's city view. It's taken of sun coming through the leaves. And around the city today at 3 o'clock, the central city recorded 20 degrees, 22 at the gardens and 26 out on the Tyree. To the situation and a ridge of high pressure is spreading onto the South Island. The good news is it will remain through most of next week. To the main towns for the Lower South Island tomorrow, it's looking like a fine day for Invercargill, Gore and Tiano, highs of around 17 or 18. Some cloud for Alexander with south easters and 18 degrees. Some cloud with south easters for Queenstown, Wanaka and Twizel. Uh, afternoon nor easters for Omro, a wee bit of cloud there too with 17 degrees. In Dunedin tonight, a bit of low cloud with a low of 9 degrees. Sunny periods tomorrow with nor'easters developing and a high of 17. And on Sunday, my pick for washing day at this stage, fine and sunny with a high of 19. And to the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information, low tide tomorrow morning is at 9.30 and high tide on Sunday afternoon is at 12 to 4. And fishing conditions look reasonable tomorrow morning, especially around 25 past 11, and even better on Sunday at around 20 past 12. Well, that is all from the team here at 39 Dunedin News for this week. We will be taking a break on Monday for Waitangi Day, but we will see you again on Tuesday. In the meantime, we're going to leave you with some shots from the week that was. Have a lovely weekend. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.